See any activity in that? Hey everyone, I'm Jay Dorino. Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. Now history is littered with savage warriors who left their mark on humanity through brutality. We've done some diggings to find out which ones were the scariest. And we've compiled a list of the top 10 scariest warriors. Make sure you stick around for the top three. We got some of the most scary, ruthless people who ever existed. Number 10, Vlad the Impaler. To start off the list, we got a man who was rumored to start the myth of Dracula. Vlad the Impaler was the ruler of Wallachia between 1448 and 1476. Vlad got his famous name by doing the very obvious, impaling. He would put a giant stake right at someone's rectum and then prop them up. Then the person would slowly slide down as it pierced through their whole body. Legend has it is he would take the shish kebab people and put them along the line to the walkway to his castle. Like the most dramatic welcome mat. It was said to be so disturbing that when armies came to raid him, they would turn away in fear. But how did he get the name Dracula? Well apparently when he would dine, he would dip his bread in the blood of his enemies. It's kind of a drama queen. We get it. You're evil. Number 9. King Leonidas. The man for the famous... This is Sparta! He was one of the most feared warriors of all time. Now in the movie, they say it was 300 Greek Spartans against 1 million Persians. But it was more like 7,000 against 150,000. Still crazy odds. No smart gambler would ever take those odds. But through superior fighting techniques and being one of the scariest guys of all time, Leonidas and his men were able to slaughter thousands of Persian warriors. Eventually they were betrayed and Leonidas was killed, but they bought Greece enough time to get reinforcements to come back and win the war. Leonidas was said to be so powerful, people thought he was a descendant of Hercules himself. Number 8. Zhao Hu Dun This is the kind of stuff that gets you feared throughout all time. Zhao Hu Dun was famous for being one of the most respected generals in the Eastern Han Dynasty of China. From an early age, this guy was ferocious. He once killed a man for insulting his teacher when he was only 13. They tried to put him on an episode of Beyond Scared Straight, but he just started pimp slapping everyone. Now this is what has Xiao Hao forever locked in history as one of the most feared warriors of all time. During a battle against Lu Bu in the late 2nd century, Mr. Dun received an arrow in the eye. Now usually, when someone gets an arrow in the eye, they... Either that or just die. Not this guy, he pulled the arrow out of his eye and then ate his eyeball off of the arrow. Like it was fondue. Are you kidding me? I'm so glad I'm born in the era of heated seats. Number seven, Galvarino. This one is so dope it could have been number one. Galvarino was a Mapuche warrior in Chile. He fought when the Spanish were invading. During the Battle of Lagunillas, many of the Mapuche were captured. What the Spanish would do is cut off one of your hands and your nose and then send you back mutilated to strike fear into your soldiers. For Galvarino, they went the extra mile and cut off both his hands. This is where the story turns up. He went back to his people, showed them his disfigured body and demanded justice and justice is what he would receive. He was named commander of a squadron and for the next battle he tied knives to his stumps and went around knife punching people to death. Are you hearing this? He was doing Wolverine before Stan Lee was even a sperm. It said that a man questioned him once on how a man could fight with no hands and he said, I'll rip them apart with my teeth. Ooh. Number 6, Lu Bu. Remember the guy who ate his own eyeball? This is the maniac he was fighting when that happened. Lu Bu was stomping around China during the late 2nd century. What made Lu Bu so feared wasn't that he was an excellent archer or a skilled swordsman, it was that he was straight up insane. Lu Bu was an orphan who was adopted into a home and cared for by his stepfather. One day, a warlord named Dong Zhou offered him a horse. But it wasn't just any horse, it was a red hare, the fastest horse in China. This is the Rolls Royce of horses. So Lu Bu, he cut off his stepfather's head to make Dong Zhu his new dad. Sometimes you get a really nice gift and you don't know how to show your appreciation. Lu Bu followed this up by banging Dong Zhu's mistress and then cutting off Dong Zhu's head and then going rogue with an army through the countryside. Number five, Miyamoto Musashi. This guy is such a big deal, you can go out right now and buy his book. Have you ever heard of the Book of Five Rings? The book about where there's only one skill, strategy, and through strategy you can master all other skills? 
I really like this book, so I'm just kind of being a fanboy right now. Possibly the most skilled swordsman who ever lived, Miyamoto Musashi was a samurai in Japan during the late 14th century into the early 15th century. What made this man so feared wasn't that he killed his first man when he was only 12 using a stick when the other guy had a sharpened blade, or that he would challenge opponents who mastered all different kinds of weapons, or that he went undefeated in 61 life or death matches. This guy's putting up Kobe numbers. It was that he would defeat all of his opponents using his mind, or in other words, strategy. He would do things like show up to a duel extremely late so his opponent would be flustered. On one occasion, he knew that his opponent was fighting with an extra long sword. So he made an even longer sword out of wood. So when they both drew, Miyamoto would land the killing blow. A true warrior who mastered his art and deserved to be feared. Tilawekul, a silly name, a very scary dude. We're heading to Mexico during the late 13th century. This guy was a beast. He was said to be so powerful that others couldn't even lift his weapons that he brought into war. He was from the Tlaxican tribe, and during a war with the Aztecs, he was captured. However, King Montezuma found that he was so brave, he's probably just terrified of him, that he would let him go. But Tilawikul refused and demanded to be given a warrior's death. So Montezuma gave him an Aztec tradition. He would be given his regular weapons and then attacked simultaneously by eight of the finest Aztec warriors. And he killed all of them. Eventually, a ninth guy was able to come in and take him out. This dude killed eight dudes in a row, no Gatorade break. Number three, Pierre Jalof's Doña. This next guy was a farmer? Pierre was just a regular old farmer in 1515. That's until the Austrian mercenaries, the Habsburgs, came and brutally killed his wife and children. Then this dude literally goes Punisher. He lost everything and now all he cares about is revenge. He got some rebels together and sent off as a pirate. It's estimated that he sunk as many as 138 Austrian ships. He also took his crew and ransacked two castles and killed an army that was 300 soldiers. These guys were rolling deep. He then retired in 1520. This dude was so good at killing people, he had to retire like it was a career. Somewhere in Austria, they have his jersey hanging off the rafters. Number two, Flamma, or otherwise known, the flame. Back in 60 AD, how did you get famous? There was no YouTube, there was no movies. You couldn't go on Dr. Phil and be like, huh? Catch me outside, how about that? Catch you outside? For the Roman gladiator Flamma, he only saw one way, and that way was killing a bunch of people for other people's entertainment. Sort of like an OJ approach. If you don't know how gladiators work, they were predominantly slaves. And if you won enough, you would be granted your freedom. Now Flamma didn't want freedom. He just wanted to be famous. We don't even know what his real name is because the gladiator persona took over. He spent 13 years as a gladiator, fought 30 battles, was offered his freedom at least four times and rejected it every single time. Imagine wanting the spotlight that bad. I would love for this dude to be alive today who had definitely been interviewed on Rogan. Like, you've killed how many people? Bro, you should try DMT, it'll calm you down. And our number one, Genghis Khan. Finally, we've come to the grand finale and we've got probably the most famous conqueror of all time. Genghis Khan was responsible for gaining the trust of several smaller Mongolian clans and convincing them to join forces in what would be the most savage army the world would ever see. The Mongolian Empire ended up spanning 24 square kilometers. They killed upwards of 40 million people, which was 10% of the world's people at that time. 40 million people, that's more than all of Canada. There was literally so much less people and so much more vegetation in place of those people that Genghis Khan removed an estimated 700 million tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The Mongolians were extremely terrifying. They had these massive siege machines that were used to shoot boulders over huge walls. But instead of putting boulders in them, they would put in dead bodies and light them on fire. Armies who would try to follow the Mongolian troops would often get sick from walking over all the rotted corpses in their path. This guy was serious. Well that's our list. Let us know which ones you liked, which ones you thought we should move around. If there's any crazy warriors that you guys would put on the list, put it in the comments. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the little notification bell, and until next time, I'm Shade Arena, and I will never be doing any of this because I'm a wimp.